In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a firewall router using a custom distribution of Linux. Now, the one that I really like to use is by Endian, endian.com. So if you go to endian.com, they have a community edition of their Endian Unified Threat Management Firewall. If you go to Community and you go over to Download, you'll see that there's an Indian Firewall Community open source UTM solution for home use, which you can download right here. Like if you click this, it will give you another page. And I've downloaded this version right here, EFW Indian Firewall 3.3. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to download, install, set it up, and then test it out and get it working. And to do that, I'm gonna do that using virtual machines that to just demonstrate the lab. So once you've downloaded this file, I have it on my desktop right here. It's EFW Community Edition ISO. This is the image. So this is the image file that we're going to be working with. And then you'll need to open up VirtualBox, create a new virtual machine. I'm going to call it Endian 3.3 and I'll change it from Windows here to Linux. And I'll say that it's got the Linux 2.6 64-bit uh, kernel. And I'll hit Next. I'll set the RAM on it to two gigabytes, just because I can, however much RAM that you can afford to allocate to your virtual machine. I'll create a virtual hard disk for it. Eight gigabytes seems big enough, so I'll hit Create. I'll accept the default and uh, dynamically allocated. That's fine. And Create. All right, excellent. The next thing that you want to do now that you have this, this virtual machine created is point it at your ISO image file. So I'll go to Settings here, Storage, and there is my virtual CD DVD drive. And I'll just click here and choose that ISO image file. And now when it boots up, it should load that. Now before I do this, I'm also gonna be needing some network adapters here. So the first network adapter, I'm gonna put that into internal mode here. So this first one, I'll put it into internal network, and then you can give it a name. Right now this name is INTNet. You could change it to whatever name works for you, but I'll just, INTNet is fine for me right here. Uh, if not, give it a name. And then adapter two, this one, um, I'll enable that one also, and I'll put that in bridged mode, which will bridge out to my local area network here off this host computer using my wireless NIC. So adapter one is in internal network, adapter two is in the bridged adapter. Adapter one should be ethernet zero, and then adapter two would be ethernet one. So. All right, let's see if this works. So I'll click OK, and it should, when I power it up, if I click Start now, it should boot up this ISO image file and start the installation through the virtual DVD drive. And the installation process starts. It looks like it's working. All right, I have to make a few choices here. Um, Let's see here, tab, English, okay, and um, welcome, okay. And it says here, do you wanna do this? Yes, I wanna do this. Okay, it's installing all of the packages, so I may need to pause the recording and come back when it's finished all right. Oh, no, looks like it's good. Do I want to enable console over serial? I don't think I'll be needing that for this virtual machine, so I'll just hit enter for to accept no. Now, here's where I can change the IP address information on the LAN side of this firewall router. So this is a, going to be a custom uh, uh, Linux firewall, which will have two network interfaces, one pointing to the WAN, the other pointing to the LAN. So the green interface is the LAN side. So I'm going to change it from 192.168.0.15 to 0.1, because that sounds good to me. 
and I'll just tab and OK. And so when this runs through the installation procedure, the way I'll access this device will be, uh, I'll, I'll reach it at 192.168.0.1. And that should be on my first network adapter on that internal network. So I'll need to reach this device from another computer. And I'm going to run another virtual machine to communicate with it. And we'll see how that goes. But first, we have to finish this installation. All right, it looks good. It tells me to remove any media and how to reach it. I'll just click OK. It's going to restart the system. And it'll give me a console interface with some information on how to connect to it. And I'll see that here in a second. Okay, it's booting up. It's giving uh, plenty of good information. And this is the console interface that you see when it finishes installing and booting up. Now, a couple of things to note here that it tells you that the green zone in the management URL is https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.1 colon 10443. So I'm going to need to manage this by opening up a web browser and going to 192.168.0.1 on port 10443. All right, so that looks good. Now this console interface, you can administer it through that by putting in choices down here, like zero to give me a shell, one I can reboot, two I can change the root password, three I can change the admin password. The admin password is for the web management interface and the root password is for a shell interface, like a secure shell interface or the console interface. I can restore factory defaults, but if I put in four and hit enter, and I could open up the network configuration, win uh, network configuration wizard and manage that by entering a five. So this is just a console interface, but this is not where you would typically manage it. To manage this device, what I'm going to do is, is I'll click the alt tab to release my cursor. I'll put this over here. And what I'll do is I'll go to my mint computer here. I have a mint computer here, virtual machine, and I'm going to go to settings, network, and I'm going to change the network adapter over to internal network, the same name though, intnet here. And so now if I boot up this Linux mint box, then it should communicate on the internal network virtually with this Endian firewall virtual machine. So kind of in, a, in a, a network just between the two of them internally. And if it works, then the Endian firewall will, as a DHCP server, should issue an IP address over to this Mint virtual machine, and I should be able to uh, manage it from the web browser. So we'll see if this works. Now I've used this virtual machine in other classes, so what I'll need to do is, is I'll I'll need to reset the network card um, or refresh the network card and we'll see if it works. All right, so I'm logging in and I can close this um, command prompt. And over here you can see this is my little, it's like a system tray in Mint in the bottom right hand corner, like you would see in, in Windows or something. And there's the wired connection. So I'll just click on that again to kind of refresh it and it should pick up an IP address from the Endian because the Endian's running a DHCP server. So let's see if it does. All right, so I'll go over here. I'll... kind of hover over it or what I could do is I could just, let's say, well, I'm gonna, let's go to these settings here now, I may have to change these network settings in my browser to no proxy. Okay, that looks good. So Firefox is configured correctly. And then I have a firewall here. I'm going to turn that off right now because I don't want that to get in the way. Whoops, no, off. Good.
public off office off okay so it's off on the firewall and now I should be able to open up this browser and talk to this Endian firewall so to do that I'll go to HTTPS colon 192.168.0.1 colon 10.443 hit enter and it says the connection is not secure do I want to accept the security certificate I do because it's an HTTPS I'll add an exception to accept the self-signed security certificate from the Indian firewall so I'll confirm the security exception and welcome to Indian firewall so this is the first login from a web browser so we're going to do some setup here so I'll click on this button and run some setup. Uh, language, English, time zone, I'll change it to where I'm located. Let's see here. Okay. I'll accept the license agreement. I do not want to restore do you want to restore a backup? No. So I'll click forward here. Now the front end password, the admin password, and the root password. So this is the, the web-based password and the root password. This is SSH password. So I'll need to put in a password for both of these. I'm just going to put in a very simple one for testing purposes. And ideally, these would want to be different passwords, but right now I'll just do whatever is easiest all right now after you put in the admin password for the web browser interface and the root password for SSH console um, interface you set up your uh, you can set up the mode so let's take a look at these network modes routed mode is the standard operating mode where um, you're basically setting up a, a router bridged mode is the operating mode the appliance acts transparently so this would be like a transparent bridge where you could put the Indian firewall on one interface and then traffic would just go through it to the other interface almost like using it like a switch where you it wouldn't be doing any routing it would be like a switch bridging but it could still sniff traffic or um, filter traffic through the antivirus system or the firewall or it could do all kinds of stuff in bridge mode as well it just wouldn't be doing any routing or natting or you know things like that um, and then no uplink um, let's see in this operating mode the appliance is part of the local network but does not act as a gateway so you could make it um, this could be like a server on the network that's my guess so those are the three modes here so routed mode is what we want we're going to be using it as a router all right so um, uplink type on the red zone Ethernet DHCP it should pick up an IP address from the automatically using a DHCP client on your WAN side now depending on how you would be using this depending on your internet service provider maybe you'd want a static public address maybe you'd have a mobile broadband 3G 4G wireless card that it would connect to or PPP over Ethernet or maybe you're connecting it to an analog modem but right now Ethernet DHCP sounds um, typical and then I'll click the next button if you wanted to you could set up a DMZ in an orange zone you could have another network segment for wireless clients like a public Wi-Fi in the blue zone and so right now I'm just gonna say no to that I'm not gonna make two additional zones we're just gonna have the red zone and the green zone one for the WAN one for the LAN so here's my LAN so right now enabled the DHCP server on the zone my IP address which I could change if I want I could give it additional addresses here which is pretty cool and then right now it, I can choose which NIC I want it to be so I've got Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 or NIC 1 and NIC 2 basically 
And so the first NIC we have on the internal network, so that's the one we want in the green zone, okay? I could change the host name here to, let's say, EFW uh, Firewall, or I could just make it EFW. Uh, I could change the domain name if I wanted to, um, you name it. Now, the um, so this is for the green zone. So I'll hit next. All right, and then the red zone, the untrusted network, which is gonna be automatically set to pick up an IP address using DHCP client, that's the red one, that'll be ethernet one. Okay, so I could, there's a couple other settings here. I could set up automatic DNS or manual DNS, or I could set up the maximum transmission unit that's allowed by this router or spoof the MAC address, all kinds of things. I'm just gonna hit next. The DNS resolver will set up DNS automatic. And this is where you would put in an admin email address. So you could have messages sent to you as the admin. I'll just leave it blank for now. And then I'm done. So I'll click OK to apply the configuration. And looks like everything's been saved. And so it tells you that everything's going to be reloaded now that you've set up these settings. And it could take up to 20 seconds right, for this to to reload. So we'll hit refresh. Let's see if I hit refresh. Ah, now I have to put in my password. So username is admin and then the password that you gave it and to log back in. All right, and this is once you're logged in, this is how your management dashboard for managing your Endian firewall router. Now a couple things here, it's pretty cool. It tells you the version, it shows you your network interfaces. Right now, um, Ethernet Zero is uh, actually a bridged interface, so it shows bridge zero, that's on your LAN, right? So you could you could bridge it with other interfaces, essentially. And then your, your WAN, your red zone, is Ethernet One and it's looking pretty good. Now let's take a look here. Notice down here my uplink, which is Ethernet 1, my WAN side, picked up an IP address on my local network. That's because I know that my local network is an 8 network, and you can see it picked up a an IP address on my local network. So right now, on one of my network interfaces, my red interface, I'm, I'm on my local network, and on the green interface, uh, so basically, what does that mean? It means that here I mint, right? This is my mint virtual machine, and I'm connecting to the Endian firewall virtual machine. Notice there's the red zone now on the console. And so traffic is going from mint here virtually through the Endian firewall and then out to my local network to the internet. So if this works, I should be able to go here and you know visit a, a website let's say like uh, ESPN or something like that. And we'll see if I'm online here, and I am. So that's great. So now traffic is flowing from this virtual machine through this virtual machine, which is a firewall router, out to the internet. Okay, now that we have that, we could set up some, we could set up with some of the, some of the many services that are available in this Endian firewall. This kind of all, cap all kinds of capabilities are built in here. So let's take a look at that. What are some of the services that you could utilize? So it's got um, a DHCP server, which you've already seen. Here's the settings, which you could change. Uh, dynamic DNS, an antivirus engine for scanning um, for uh, viruses and packets crossing the firewall router, time server, spam detection, intrusion prevention system. This is a Snort IPS intrusion prevention system that you could that you could start and use just by clicking here to activate it. All right, so this is Snort built in here. Um, traffic monitoring. This is pretty cool. This is like a kind of like a, a I think it's NTOP that it uses, but you could turn it on, and then it'll give you an interface for monitoring traffic that crosses the um, uh, the network. So for instance, if I click administration interface, it says welcome to uh, Nentop, uh, uh, Ntop, right? So it'll show you network flows, flow talkers going through the, 
the firewall router. So like if I go here once again to ESPN, and then I'm in, you can see there's the, the network flows going through um, an end top showing you basically the type of activity crossing this firewall router. Very cool, right? Um, what else do we want to see? I, I like end top. That's pretty cool. I'll turn it off for now. Um, there's an SNMP server and quality of service. So you could set up some simple network management protocol or some, some QoS, um, which is, I mean, this is amazing. Uh, also, it has this great firewall. It's a, it's an Indian UTM firewall. So hey, let's let's set up some firewall rules on our firewall. And once again, everything we're doing here, we're actually is it being applied to this firewall router over here. This is our firewall router. It's a standalone device with two interfaces right now. Um, Ethernet zero, which is our green zone, our LAN connects out to our LAN, and Ethernet one, which is our WAN NIC, our red zone, which connects out to the internet. So what I'm going to do is here on in Mint, let's see here if I have on Mint, let's see if I have a, a web server running here in Mint. So I'm going to say 127.0.0.1. We'll see if I have a web server running here on Mint. I do, you see. Uh, welcome to Dan's web page. So that means that here on Mint, um, I'm going to say service, let's see here, status Apache 2. Um, I think I got that backwards. You see that I have a web server, an Apache web server running right here in Mint. So I have my own web server, and you can see that um, from this Mint virtual machine, if I went to 127.0.0.1, which is myself, right, my local host, you can see it says welcome to Dan's web page. So I have a web server, right? So, um, but let's say I want this web server um, on my home network. I want it to be visible through the firewall, right? I, I want the, the router to route traffic through the router to Mint and I want to open up this web server and make it visible on the internet. So you have to basically put a firewall rule to allow traffic through the firewall to reach your local computer behind your firewall on basically uh, for WWW traffic, for World Wide Web traffic. So to do that, what I'm going to do is, is I'll go into this firewall here and I'll just create a new rule. So let's see here, add new port forwarding rule. And if it works out, we'll see. We'll see if it works. So, incoming, we'll say from um, any uplink, okay? Or you could say, yeah, no, from any uplink, right? Incoming service port, we'll say HTTP, okay? Port 80, right? Translate to, and then we're going to need the IP address. So let's see what's the IP address of Mint here. So for mint, um, if config, uh, my IP address here is 192.168.0.2. So we'll say 192.168.0.2 on port 80. Um, and we're basically natting it. So we're going to translate it. So traffic coming in from the outside on this router translate it to 192.168.0.2 on port 80. And I'll say, I'm going to put a comment on this, forward web traffic to mint. Right? Right? That's basically what I want to do. So I want to forward web traffic, right, over to the mint web server. Create rule and apply. And this is what the rule looks like here. So uplink any, notice it's red for the red zone on port 80. Policy basically nat it over to uh, port forward it to 192.168.0.2 on port 80. And then I've got my little comment here. Notice it's checkmarked, which means it's active. 
and it should work now. So now, what does that mean? It means that here's my Indian firewall at 8.133. So now here in Windows, I'll just say 192.168.8.133, and I get to Dan's web page. So that goes through the Indian firewall, through the router, port forwarded over to Mint. So now I'm going from my Windows host computer here, going through the Indian firewall to behind the firewall to this other um, computer that is, that's basically on the firewall's private LAN. And I'm able to reach it, and there it is. So that's an example of working with the firewall rules that are this port forwarding, right? So there's a port forwarding NAT, there's outgoing traffic, inner zone traffic, VPN traffic, system access, and firewall diagrams. So all of these are listed under firewall. You can also set up um, a web proxy for filtering content. This is basically a squid uh, proxy server. So if we wanted to, we could say enable HTTP proxy. And essentially now that's um, setting up basically a squid web proxy server. All right, so let's see here. Port used by proxy, um, not transparent. You could say, let's make this a transparent proxy. So all traffic crossing this firewall is proxied. So we can set up a web filter. We'll say advanced, add exception, come on. All right, manage web filter. All right. Um, web filter profiles, new profile. I'll say Dan's profile. And filter page is known to have content in one of the, we could set up, we could filter pages based on some of these ca categories. So drugs, violence, adult content, all kinds of things, gambling. So we could set up, this is blacklist categories, which we could blacklist or we could set up a custom blacklist. So custom blacklist, allow the following sites, block the following sites. So ESPN.com or um, let's see here, ESPN.com. Yeah, that, that's the one we want to block. All right, so that that's, uh, yeah, let's say we want to block that, no specific reason. Um, but we'll say add, all right, and apply. So now we have this profile, Dan's profile. It's looking pretty good. Okay. We could set up authentication, access policy, filter for virus, we could set up virus filtering, add an access policy. Source type. A green zone, destination type, any authentication disabled, allow access Dan's profile, filter profile, um, deny access based on that, poly no, deny access, allow access, but based on Dan's profile. Am I, maybe I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. There we go. All right, um, allow access based on Dan's, create policy. So filter using Dan's profile. Source the green network, destination any. Um, sounds good, apply. 
All right. So these are being applied. So now on our access policy, I'm filter using Dan's profile under web filter. I had created Dan's profile. The only thing I did was I, I could filter based on, once again, I could block certain categories. So let's say here, I want a certain categories blocked, you know, uh, because you're running kids or you're a business and you don't want people um, fooling around, going to gambling sites or playing games or whatever. So block, 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 right? Or sports, you know, you don't want them doing that. It's kind of, I don't know, it depends, right? Maybe you have a, a very strict network or business and you have to um, do strict filtering um, on the network. And I, as an example, let me turn off the sports one because I, I don't, I want the, this custom blacklist to activate. Block the following sites, ESPN.com. All right. Change. Looks good. Apply. So this is a squid web proxy. So now let's see if it works. So here I'm, I'm behind this firewall router here. And if I go to msn.com, let's see here, I can go there. But if I try to go to ESPN.com, oh, looks like it still works. Boo. All right. Um, hmm. Save dance default profile. Um, configuration. It's on. Port used by proxy. Let's change it to port 80. We'll see if that works. And save. Port 80 is already used. I'm updating and we'll test this out again. You know what also I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm not getting a cached page. So preferences, let's go in here to, to you know, is this a true test since I already visited that site? Maybe I'm just getting a cached page which um, which would be your your history your browser history so go to privacy and security cookies history never remember history restart firefox right now So yahoo.com, whoops, I can go to yahoo.com. Great. But if I try to go to ESPN.com, I should get blocked. Nope, I'm still not getting. Hmm. Well, it's, it should be an automatic proxy scenario. Let's see if it's working if I deliberately tell it to use the proxy. So if I say, okay, transparent proxy, network settings, it should be doing it transparently, but I'm gonna say use manual proxy configuration the proxy is 192.168.0.1. OK. 
Okay. On port 3128. Okay. And maybe what I need to do is let me go back to the Indian firewall. Whoops, I got that proxy set up, so. The automatic proxying should be working. There we go, the Indian firewall. Put in my password. I don't want any updates. Okay, once again, the proxy. Port used by proxy. I'm going to change it to the default port for Squid, which is 3128. There we go. And save apply changes right now it's set to not transparent I just want to test to see if it's going to work so under network settings manual proxy configuration port 3128 click OK so now we're using the proxy if I go to Yahoo, I should be able to get to Yahoo. Great, I do. And if I go to ESPN, I'm blocked. Access has been denied. Excellent. So, and it tells you it's been denied by the Indian. Great. So now we'll try something else out. We'll say, all right, no proxy this time. But now what I want to do is, no proxy, instead of using this enable HTTP proxy, not transparent, we're going to go to transparent mode and save and apply. So now this is a transparent proxy, so it should intercept all traffic and then um, All right, transparent proxy. It should accept all traffic. Uh, port used by proxy. It should, let's see here. I'll say now ESPN.com and it's been denied. Great save. That looks good. On the preferences, as you can see, there's no proxy. So now people on your private network, if they want to go to ESPN, they get proxied. If they want to go to, let's say, Yahoo or some other um, page, linuxmint.com, they can get there. But what they can't do is go to because you have it proxied, enable HTTP proxy, and that setting is it's transparent proxy. Once again, the access policy is applied here. Filter using Dan's profile. And under web filter is where I created Dan's profile and then made a custom blacklist. So there you have it.